Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another painting tutorial and today we are painting the Armoured Sentinel from the Cadia Stands box set. However, in our previous Cadia Stands Army box review, I made a little bit of a mistake with the video and so the review section of how to build this guy, actually you can't really hear what I'm saying. So in this video we're going to be looking at that first and then we're going to be painting up the Armoured Sentinel. So hold on to your hats. So, looking at the instructions, what we get is we get one, two, three, four, five, six pages of instructions. Now, in order to make it an armored center, really the only thing that changes is that you add some extra armor to the top of the canopy, which is a really nice touch. Uh, it just makes it very, very simple, very easy. You can just take it that one step further if you want to. Contained within are all of the weapon options that you need. Uh, plasma cannon, auto cannon, a multi-laser, uh, missile launcher, sentinel chainsword, hunter killer missile. There's a lot of different options in here. But as you can see, it's a very linear, set of instructions it takes you all the way through now if you intend to just build an armored sentinel and that's probably what i'm going to build you don't have to put the crewman in you just don't need to because the piece itself you can't see him through there so it doesn't matter you don't need to put any of the stuff on the inside you can just glue those details on and you're good to go so with that in mind Let's have a look at the sprue. So it just comes on this one sprue and you get yourself this 80 mil, I think it was. I can't remember, let me just check. Yes, 80 millimeter base on which to assemble your Sentinel. Here it is. So we just got those two half sprues. So once again, just gonna split those in half I'm going to have a look at each one individually. Now, we have our usual problems with any of the vehicle style kits in that you are inevitably going to get mold lines on these large pieces because you're going to print them in a 2D plane, but they are large pieces. So as you can see here, you get a little bit of a mold line going on around here. So you do just want to bear that in mind when you're going to go and do your scraping. But otherwise, much like with the field guns, the pieces are all kind of on that 2D plane. There's not a lot of kind of sunk, sunk pieces, which is always nice to see. And it makes it for very easy clipping and removing. So when you're clipping out here, here and here, it, the connection is just on the piece itself. So you just need to be careful when you're scraping it, but you just need to, you, know, you don't have to worry about any kind of additional bits of plastic on the inside, causing that kind of appearance when you glue things together. Otherwise, it's a pretty decently laid out sprue, as you can see. Nice and simple, and it only comes in two half sprues, which is very, very cool. This is mostly all of our vehicle components here. We do have connection points on the circular bits, the curved bits on these kind of pistons and things for the legs. So you do just want to watch out that you get that nice, smooth motion, kind of circular motion, scraping it off or rather than getting a kind of flattening off those things. But otherwise, pretty nice. Looking at the other sprue, here we have the Sentinel Chainsaw, and it's very nicely attached to the sprue in that we don't have any sprue contact points on the chainsaw itself, but on the blades, we just have it on the frame, which is great. It makes it nice and easy to smooth it down. This is the kind of top of the legs, the crotch part, if you will, of the Sentinel. And we do have contact points on the dome, but that will be covered up when we put the cockpit on the top. As for the weapons, we have our contact points in fairly obvious places, which can be a little bit frustrating. And again, same here on the multi-laser, we have the kind of contact point just there on the barrel itself. Otherwise, the weapons come in pretty much one piece, which is very cool. Is that a LAS cannon? 
I think that's a las cannon. I didn't know they could have las cannons, but I think that's a multi laser. We'll investigate. <laughs> so, the only other things to watch out for is if you are going to be building a Scout Sentinel, you do have these kind of contact points on the outside of the arms, but they are on the underside. So when you glue your cockpit, when you glue your individual into your cockpit, you're not gonna be able to see these bits. So it's a matter if you're a little bit rough with them. And of course the heads are once again attached at the neck. That's been consistent throughout all of this stuff, which is just an absolute top mark in my opinion. Very, very, very nice. So, with all that in mind, it's time to build our Sentinel. And that's exactly what we're going to do coming up next. And here we have the finished armoured sentinel as you've already seen twice in this video by now. However, before we jump into the painting there's just one last thing for me to tell you about and that is of course about our sponsor, Serious Readers. Serious Readers. Enjoy daylight indoors with a serious light. Serious lights are designed as a tool to help you see detail and colour and to enjoy what you love doing without straining your eyes to see. Sirius lights use daylight wavelength technology, which replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as possible, helping you to pick your colors accurately, and just as importantly, see what you're doing when you're using them. Sirius Readers is a British company, and the Sirius lights range is built right here in the UK. You can select a number of different options, and if you use offer code WARHIPSTER at checkout, they'll throw in a free compact light with any purchase in the Sirius Lights range. Find out more in the links below. All right, with all that out of the way, it is now time to start painting the Armoured Sentinel. It has been primed in Wraithbone, as has the rest of our set. And the first colour that we're going to be using is a roughly four parts Black Legion to one part contrast medium mix. And we're going to be painting this all over the areas of the body that we want to be that really dark green. It's almost black, which is why we're starting off with this black colour. Now, we're going to be painting this over, basically, it's, it's areas such as the kind of... frame, basically. And I would recommend having the product photography, the 360 degree in front of you for this. But it's going to be all of this, kind of all of the legs, basically. There's a couple of little silver details in there, but not quite as many as I initially ex expected there to be. So we're going over like this with this mix. And we've got that little bit of contrast medium in there. Sometimes you can add a little bit more if you want, because we want this to kind of really kind of amplify the kind of almost dark brown that Black Legion actually is. I want to elevate those properties for when we get our dark green on there. So we're just going to get this all over. And as I mentioned, it's pretty much the entirety of the legs. We've got the kind of grated area on the back here. So with that done, you should have this greyish brown look to your Sentinel's kind of back grating and also to the majority of its exoskeleton. So what we're going to do, instead of finishing that off, we're going to now move on to the next colour, which is going to be the most of the armour, because the same final stage on the armour 
is the same thing that goes on on the black. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a roughly four parts Creed camo to one part contrast medium mix. And we're going to apply this over, well, quite a lot of the model. And well, what we're going to do is we're just going to take this very steadily. We're going to go quite methodically here and we're going to start at the back here. And we're just going to start applying this over the top of the Sentinel's armor. There's tons of it. It's a very simple color scheme, this one. It's very nice. You just want to take it a section at a time to ensure you get a nice smooth coverage. Just being quite methodical here. rather than just attacking the Sentinel head on. So with that done, you should have this bright green Sentinel now. However, what we're going to do is we're going to darken it down to the box art color. And the first layer we're going to be adding for that is a roughly four parts orc flesh to one part contrast medium mix. Again, we're creating that orc flesh puddle and then adding a bit of contrast medium in there. And we're just going to once again, go over the top of all of our Creed camo areas. Taking it nice and steady. We're going to do two layers of this. just to really bring down that warm color. So after two layers of that orc flesh and contrast medium mix being applied, as you can see, we've got this really nice green. However, we are now gonna darken it down that one final step. And the way we're gonna do this is gonna create roughly four parts Dark Angels green to two or three parts contrast medium. It's kind of dealer's choice at this point. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply this over the top of the green armor, but also over the top of the black. So I'm just going to pick a place to start. And I'm going to start down here. I'm just going to start applying this over the top of all of these areas. And as you can see, over the top of that black legion thins down mix, it comes out really, really dark. However, once we get to that thigh plate there, once I've finished this section, You'll see what it looks like over the top of a lot brighter green. We do just want to finish this section so we don't get any awkward drying lines, which is something we desperately don't want. Similarly, over the top of this knee. You 
you see how you get this really rich green versus that much darker. So with that done, you should now have a pretty awesome looking Sentinel. He's looking pretty cool. However, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some dry brushes for some highlights. And the first one we're gonna add is Wa Flesh. And we're gonna be dry brushing this over the top of the darker green, the almost black areas. Nice and gentle. Just catching those edges. So with that wire flesh applied, we're then gonna do the same thing again, only we're gonna be using some Strachan Green here. And we're gonna be very, very gentle over our darker areas. We're just gonna catch the kind of sharper points and the upward facing details like this. But what we're also gonna do is we're gonna apply this as a little dry brush over the top of our armor. And again, you just wanna be really careful here gently hitting those areas. With the striking green. So with that done, we can now move on from the armor. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna take some Black Legion up next and we're gonna use this to paint in any weapon casings, including on the Hunter Killer missile and the plasma cannon and the, what's it called? Sentinel chain sword, that's the one. So we're just gonna apply this over the top, just like this, straight from the pot. You don't need to thin this down. And it doesn't matter that we've got green on there because the Black Legion will just cover it over nicely, as you can see. Just like this. So with that Black Legion all applied to all of these details, we also applied it over the top of the box just there, excluding those two little straps. And guess what color those are gonna be. <laughs> but what we're gonna do, whilst we're waiting for the Black Legion to dry, is we're gonna take some Frost Heart, and we're gonna apply this over the top of the plasma coils. And with that frost heart applied, we're then gonna take some Flesh Terrors Red. And we're gonna apply this over the top of our smooth cables. So we've got one here on the plasma. Like that. We've got a couple on the legs as well. So 
So with that flesh terror is red applied, we're then going to take some iron jaws yellow and we're going to apply this over the top of this little ring here. On the missile. We're also going to apply one a little freehand, if you will, around the base of the warhead. And with that iron jaws yellow applied, we're then going to take some soul blight grey and we're going to apply this over the top of the remaining section of our warhead. So with that soul blight gray applied, we're then gonna take some wildwood and we're gonna apply this over the top of our two leather straps. Here. Like that. And here. So with that wildwood applied, it's now time to do our final base coat, which is gonna be some thinned down iron warriors. And well, we're gonna apply this over everywhere that still requires paint. So, just gonna work our way up the model. So we're just gonna start down here. So with that done, as you can see, our Sentinel now has all of its colors on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some shades. Well, one shade to be precise. And that color is going to be Null Oil. And we're gonna be applying this over the top of all of our silver and our black. And with that null oil applied, one area we didn't shade was the vision slits in the Sentinel windows here. So we've got one there, one there, and one there. But we did paint them with Iron Warriors. But the reason why we didn't shade them is because we didn't need to. Because what we are gonna do is we're gonna take some Ultramarines Blue. I'm gonna apply this over the top. Next. So with that done, our Sentinel is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. It's looking pretty cool. However, we're not gonna leave it there. Know what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it to the next level. And we're gonna do this by adding some layers and some highlights. Now, the first layer we're gonna add is Dawnstone. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint this over the top of that soul blight gray area because I want this to be a lot darker. Being careful once we approach the yellow. Just like that. We do the same thing. All the way around. Like so. And what we're also gonna do is we're gonna take this Dawnstone and we're gonna use this to highlight our black details. So we're just gonna pick out the rivets and the edges. So with that Dawnstone applied to all of those black details, as you can see, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna highlight all of the silver, using some thinned down 
iron hand steel. I'm just going to start just here on this Aquila. We're just going to be picking out all of the edges across all of our silver details. So all of that silver now highlighted, it's now looking pretty awesome. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do the last couple of things. And one of these is to take some flesh tear as red. We're just going to apply this over this little eyepiece. Just here on the front, like that. And next up, we're going to take some Celestium Blue. Not very much of this at all. And we're going to apply this over the top of those window slits, but we're not going to apply it all over. So what we're going to do is just go from left, from left to right. Just going to add a little bit of that Celestium Blue, just there, going around about halfway. We're then going to wash our brush, and then we're just going to smooth it out. Get this cool little kind of transition from a dark blue to a slightly brighter blue. Like that. And with that done, we're then going to take a tiny amount of Corax white. I'm going to add a little dot in the top left corner of our little this doodad. Grab a little bit more, like that, and over the top of our plasma coils, just over the top, kind of the apex of each of them, just a little bit of this Corax white. Like that sort of thing. And so with our base complete, our Armoured Sentinel is now finished. And this was one of the most painless paint jobs I've ever done on something that is, you know, roughly equivalent in size to something like a Redemptor Dreadnought, at least in height. It's really, really interesting that it can just be quite as simple as it was. If <laughs> you see what I mean, I was very pleasantly surprised. Color scheme is very simple, just a very dark green, a normal green, a silver and a black, which is just really, really fun and really, really nice to do. You could add some camo and stuff from this point onwards, but honestly, I think this looks great. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these amazing, wonderful people have done. And if you really like this video or you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.